The Neanderthals have been persistently misunderstood for a long time, with misguided myths perpetuating misconceptions about them. However, recent discoveries proved they are very much alike to human-like beings, proving that they were not mere primitive cavemen as commonly believed. These discoveries reveal how remarkably clever the Neanderthals were, their ability to adapt adeptly to any surroundings, how they not only crafted advanced tools, but also expressed their artistic inclinations, proving their sophisticated nature, and, to top it all, they had organized social structures that exhibited a cultured and intelligent species, sharing surprising similarities with early Homo sapiens. Indeed, these things are by far stranger compared to what we've always thought. In this video, we will reveal the weirdest and most surprising things that Neanderthals did. Some stories are nasty. Let's dive in. Number 15. Art and Craft Neanderthals had an incredible knack for creating useful items, like bits of twisted wood fiber attached to a modified stone flake found in France in 2017, indicating their mastery of rope making. This skill likely opened doors to crafting astonishing objects such as clothes, bags, nets, and mats. But their ingenuity didn't stop at daily chores. Neanderthals had a flair for personal adornment, using vibrant pigments like red ochre over 200,000 years ago, possibly not just on objects, but on their bodies. They even went the extra mile, importing these pigments from distant places. Excavations unveiled dazzling necklaces made from perforated and painted shells, and in Croatia, one creative Neanderthal fashioned an awe-inspiring adornment out of white-tailed eagle talons. Tool marks on bird bones suggested a penchant for feathers as well. And the surprises didn't end there. Contrary to previous beliefs, Neanderthals were the artists behind painted lines and dots on cave walls in Spain, dating back to a time when Homo sapiens were absent. They left their mark through engravings, like hashtags on a cave wall in Gibraltar, and etchings on a pebble, a flint flake, and a giant deer's toe bone. Number 14. Misunderstandings about Neanderthals' posture Initially, scientists thought Neanderthals were bent over clumsy beings because of an early skeleton found in the 19th century. However, later research revealed that this Neanderthal had severe arthritis, causing a surprisingly hunched posture. This led to the wrong idea that all Neanderthals were like that. But as more exciting discoveries and better scientific methods came, we learned that Neanderthals stood pretty much like modern humans, upright with a surprisingly straight spine. The hunched posture in that first skeleton was unusual, not the usual way Neanderthals stood. This thrilling discovery helps us see Neanderthals more accurately and understand how they relate to us. Despite knowing better about their posture, the old idea of Neanderthals as hunched and primitive still sticks around in popular culture. This persistent misunderstanding unfairly makes us think Neanderthals were less evolved and smarter than us. Neanderthals were a surprisingly sophisticated species, a lot like us in many ways. Wonder what other misconceptions we had about them? Well, we'll be revealing more of that in the video. Number 13. Early Form of Medicine A team of brilliant scientists from the University of Adelaide in Australia and the University of Liverpool in England teamed up to investigate the dental plaque stuck in Neanderthal teeth from Belgium and Spain. This plaque was a treasure trove of information about the microorganisms in their mouths, the pathogens in their lungs and digestive tracts, and even the foods and medicines they consumed. In their groundbreaking study titled Neanderthal Behavior, Diet, and Disease, inferred from ancient DNA in dental calculus, this exceptional international team sequenced the ancient DNA from five specimens of Neanderthal calcified dental plaque. The findings were nothing short of astonishing. Neanderthals in Spy Cave, Belgium, had a meat-heavy diet of woolly rhinoceros and wild sheep. Meanwhile, the Neanderthals at El Cidron Cave, Spain, were revealed to be forest gatherers, indulging in a diet that included mushrooms, pine nuts, and moss. The El Cidron Cave also unveiled a male Neanderthal with a visible dental abscess, 
What made this finding even more incredible was that the dental plaque in his teeth showed evidence of an intestinal parasite causing acute diarrhea. But here's the real wow factor. He was chewing on poplar, which contains the painkiller salicylic acid, an active ingredient in aspirin. Astonishingly, traces of a natural antibiotic mold, penicillium, the source of modern penicillin, were also found. The evidence strongly suggests that Neanderthals were utilizing medicinal remedies in a way that can only be described as extraordinary. Previous research had hinted at Neanderthals having a sophisticated knowledge of medicinal plants. Traces of yarrow and chamomile found in dental plaque underscored their exceptional understanding of the medicinal value of certain plants. Even when it came to diet, Neanderthals defied expectations. Contrary to common belief, their eating habits turned out to be mind-bogglingly diverse, with evidence from ancient feces suggesting they were true omnivores, feasting on meat and plants. The exploration of archaeological sites in Iraq added another layer of awe to the story. Evidence surfaced that tribes in the region used yarrow and mallow around 60,000 years ago. Yarrow, known for its astringent properties, likely played a role in cleaning wounds, while mallow, with its digestive benefits, would have been used to address stomach troubles. Number 12. Ability to communicate through speech. A recent study by researchers, including Binghamton University's professor Rolf Quam and graduate student Alex Velez, suggests Neanderthals could understand and make human speech. Professor Quam expressed excitement about the study, calling it one of the most significant in his career. The research focuses on the evolution of language, a challenging topic in anthropology. For years, scientists have wondered if Neanderthals could speak language like humans. The study used high-resolution CT scans to create 3D models of ear structures in Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, and ancestors of Neanderthals from the Atapuerca site. The researchers used these models to estimate hearing abilities, focusing on frequencies important for human speech. Surprisingly, Neanderthals had slightly better hearing in a specific frequency range of 4. 5 K8s compared to their ancestors from Atapuerca, resembling modern humans. Additionally, they found that Neanderthals had a wider bandwidth, suggesting a communication system as complex and efficient as modern human speech. The study also hinted that Neanderthals likely used more consonants in their speech, a unique aspect not previously emphasized. Number 11. Unique Physical Features Neanderthals possessed remarkable physical features that set them apart from modern humans. Their distinctive characteristics included impressive large eye and nasal openings, believed to enhance their vision in low light and help them navigate the cold, dark environments they often lived in. These remarkable openings also meant they had significantly larger sinus cavities, possibly granting them an extraordinary sense of smell compared to modern humans. The Neanderthal skull was not just different, it was broader and shorter than modern humans, featuring a strikingly prominent brow ridge and a sloping forehead. Their more massive jaw and larger teeth indicated adaptations for consuming a particularly robust and varied diet. Their skeletons were not just sturdy, but remarkably robust, with shorter limbs, especially compared to their powerful arms and broader chests. These physical attributes showed them extraordinary strength and endurance, making them exceptionally well-suited for the physically demanding lifestyles they led. Neanderthal males, standing at an average height of approximately 5 feet 5 inches, and females, with an average height of around 5 feet, were truly surprising. Their shorter stature and broad and robust build would have made them stand out quite remarkably from modern humans. Number 10. High Adaptability Rate Given that they did not have the ability to organize and create shelter that was conducive to different seasons, the Neanderthals developed a high adaptability rate and became good at living in all sorts of places. They could survive in freezing spots like the icy tundra in Europe during the Ice Age and warmer areas like the sunny Mediterranean. Scientists think that because the Neanderthals were used to cold weather, they had super strong, compact muscles and needed lots of calories about 4,480 every day, to stay alive. Neanderthals learned how to do amazing things, use tools, and live together in groups to get what they needed from different environments. Their astonishing ability to live in all sorts of places shows how strong and smart they were. 
They managed to do incredibly well for hundreds of thousands of years before Homo sapiens came and took over. Number 9. Interbreeding The study reveals that early Homo sapiens in Europe had a Neanderthal ancestor just a few generations back in their family line. Previous research had hinted at our ancestors mixing with Neanderthals 55,000 years ago, likely in the Middle East. But the new results show that there was even more interbreeding when modern humans ventured into Europe. An international team of researchers delved into the ancient European genome, analyzing genetic material from a jawbone discovered in a cave in Romania. The individual from the past was more closely related to Neanderthals than any other modern human examined before. What's truly mind-blowing is that the Oase individual's genome contained an extraordinary 6% to 9% Neanderthal DNA, significantly higher than the 2% to 4% found in present-day Europeans. As DNA gets passed down through generations, it usually mixes and combines. But scientists stumbled upon segments of Neanderthal DNA in the ancient fossil, this suggests that this person had a Neanderthal ancestor just four to six generations ago. An unexpected and astonishing revelation. The researchers expressed their surprise, emphasizing that finding someone so closely related to a Neanderthal was beyond their expectations. Previous studies had suggested early interbreeding between modern humans and Neanderthals, and this new evidence aligns with archaeological discoveries indicating coexistence in Europe for around 5,000 years. However, the individual from Oasi, Romania, wasn't a major contributor to Neanderthal ancestry in present-day Europe. The analysis revealed that this person was more closely related to modern East Asians and Native Americans than current Europeans. It suggests a pioneering group of early modern humans in Europe. Yet the twist is that other groups eventually replaced them. Number 8. They were exceptional hunters. When Neanderthals are portrayed in artistic reconstructions, they often wield spears, a detail that has captured our imagination. While experts have long believed Neanderthals were adept hunters, the question of how they utilized spears has remained elusive. However, a groundbreaking new study published in Nature Ecology and Evolution unveils a staggering revelation. Neanderthals employed spears for hunting animals. This research centers on 120 year old deer bones from the Neanderthal site of Neumark Nord in Germany, two of which exhibit unmistakable spear impacts. Neanderthals, once considered culturally distinct from Homo sapiens, are now recognized as more sophisticated beings. They displayed care for the vulnerable, burial practices for their dead, and engaged in symbolic behaviors. The study proposes that Neanderthals, like some contemporary chimpanzees, skillfully utilized weapons for hunting. Previous research highlighted early Neanderthal spears as basic wooden sticks without stone points, dating back 400,000 years ago in the UK and Germany. However, the latest findings from Newmark Nord provide compelling evidence that these seemingly rudimentary spears were, in fact, highly effective hunting tools. Researchers used cutting-edge micro-CT imaging to scrutinize two deer bones exhibiting clear spear impacts. They replicated similar marks through experiments with wooden spears thrust into bones embedded in gelatin. The study suggests that Neanderthals likely hunted cooperatively, even in densely forested landscapes, showcasing their extraordinary hunting prowess. Do you think they also had conflicts that resulted in fights or wars where they had to use their spears? Let us know in the comments section below. Number 7. Neanderthals could control fire. Not only Homo sapiens, but also Neanderthals were good at making and using fires regularly. A study from 2011, published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, revealed Neanderthals' amazing skill in this area. Researchers from the University of Colorado Boulder studied 141 fireplace sites in Europe and found proof that Neanderthals consistently used fire, leaving behind burned bones, heated stone tools, and charcoal. They believed that this incredible behavior started around 400,000 years ago. The University of Colorado Boulder stated in 2011 that Neanderthals were super nifty at controlling fire, according to CU Boulder researchers. Neanderthals didn't just use fire for cooking, they were also smart enough to use it to make tools, 
They used pitch, a sticky substance, to attach wooden shafts to pieces of stone. To get this gooey liquid, they had to burn the bark of birch trees, showing that Neanderthals had the super cool skill to control fire. Number 6. Neanderthals shared genetic traits with woolly mammoths. A groundbreaking study from Tel Aviv University reveals that the genetic makeup of two extinct mammals, the woolly mammoths and Neanderthals with African origins, boasted remarkable adaptations to frigid environments. These elephant-like mammoths, which evolved in the Arctic peninsula of Eurasia 600,000 years ago, and the highly skilled early humans, Neanderthals, who emerged in Europe around 400,000 years ago, shared astonishing molecular characteristics for coping with the cold. The study by Profrendran Barkai and Maydad Kislev, published in Human Biology, sheds light on the extraordinary relationship between humans and elephants during the Pleistocene epoch. The researchers uncovered mutual ecological influences and the possibility of interactions between the two species. Profren Barkai explained that Neanderthals and mammoths lived together in Europe during the Ice Age. The evidence suggests that Neanderthals not only hunted and consumed mammoths for tens of thousands of years, but were also physically dependent on the calories extracted from mammoths for their successful adaptation. To assess the remarkable resemblance between mammoth and Neanderthal genetics, the archaeologists delved into three captivating case studies of relevant gene variants associated with cold climate adaptation. These genetic components, including the LPR gene linked to thermogenesis and fat storage regulation throughout the body, unveiled a connection between the two extinct species. The second part of the study delved into genes connected to the amazing activity of keratin proteins in mammoths and Neanderthals. In the third section, the researchers focused on skin and hair color gene variations, specifically MC1R and SLC7A11. Number 5. Clothing and Footwear The mistaken idea that Neanderthals were basic cavemen without clothes is far from the truth. Exciting research and archaeological evidence reveal that Neanderthals, living in chilly places, were savvy at finding ways to stay warm. Fossil findings show Neanderthals' ingeniously crafted clothing from animal hides, likely making loose-fitting garments reminiscent of modern ponchos. These cleverly designed clothes not only provided warmth, but also offered vital protection from the harsh cold, enabling Neanderthals not just to survive, but to thrive in their challenging environments. Beyond just clothing, there's compelling evidence indicating that Neanderthals sported remarkable shoes or foot protection, the demanding terrain and frosty weather they inhabited necessitated innovative solutions for foot protection. Even though we haven't unearthed actual Neanderthal shoes, intriguing wear patterns on their toe bones strongly suggest they had some form of footwear. Moreover, there's astonishing proof that Neanderthals had the knowledge and skills to create threads and engage in basic weaving. Microscopic plant fibers found at Neanderthal archaeological sites hint that these intelligent beings might have utilized plants to craft cords and potentially even woven textiles. Number 4. Potential Musical Inclinations The question of whether Neanderthals had a remarkable musical talent is a topic that scientists passionately debate. Back in 1995, an extraordinary bone was found in a Slovenian cave. And it wasn't just any bone. It had holes deliberately spaced hinting that it might have served as a flute-like instrument for Neanderthals living there around 43,000 years ago. Some scientists are genuinely amazed, thinking this bone proves that Neanderthals were musical geniuses. Conversely, others argue that the holes could have formed naturally or due to animal activity. The ongoing debate about the bone's origin is like a suspenseful story, and right now people can't agree on whether it's a genuine musical instrument. If it turns out that Neanderthals were indeed musical maestros, it would be mind-blowing and would totally challenge the old idea that they were simple and not very smart. However, to be sure about Neanderthal musical abilities, scientists must keep digging and searching for more evidence. Do you think they had the ability to create melodies? Number 3. Burial Practices A Neanderthal skeleton, found in a French cave more than 100 years ago, was intentionally buried. This exciting revelation comes from a 13-year study showing that the Neanderthal's companions went above and beyond, carefully digging a grave to shield the body from scavengers. 
This confirms that early humans, over 50,000 years ago, were involved in thoughtful burials and sheds light on the remarkable practices of our ancient relatives. Neanderthals left only faint traces of their genes in people today. But this new study, led by New York University's paleontologist William Rendu, settles a big debate about a cave site in France called La Chapelle aux Saints. Back in 1908, two brothers who were also archaeologists found the Neanderthal skeleton and suggested it was intentionally buried. However, skeptics questioned their findings because of doubts about their excavation methods and the fact that they were Catholic priests. Fast forward to a re-examination from 1999 to 2012, and the researchers found that the spot where the Neanderthal lay wasn't just a natural hole. It was changed to make a real grave. Unlike animal bones in the cave, these Neanderthal remains were almost untouched by weathering or disturbances. Number two, diverse diets. Many used to believe they were only hardcore meat eaters. Yet the latest evidence from their digestive systems over the past 200,000 years shows that their diets were way more diverse than we thought. Starting from their mouths, Neanderthal teeth, being super tough, became an amazing source of mind-blowing information. Dental plaque, like some kind of tooth dirt, holds microscopic bits of plants, microbes, and even traces of DNA. Researchers studying plaque from Neanderthal remains in Spain uncovered a jaw-dropping revelation. They weren't just chomping on mammoth thighs. They enjoyed a feast of mushrooms, pine nuts, and moss, with no meat in sight. Meanwhile, in Belgium's spy cave, Neanderthals were indulging in a meat extravaganza, feasting on wild sheep and woolly rhinoceros. So, depending on where they lived, their diets were either super varied or meat-heavy. According to their bodies, Neanderthals had these astonishingly wide rib cages, and some smart scientists think it's because their livers and kidneys bulked up to handle loads of protein. Humans can only handle about 35% lean protein, but Neanderthals might have needed more space inside for all the wild animal protein they were rocking. You are what you eat, rings true, and evidence about Neanderthal diets can be extracted from their bones. Scientists use this cool technique called isotopic analysis, which scrutinizes the types of chemical elements in bones. It's like looking at a secret code in their skeletons. Some studies hint that Neanderthals were major carnivores, but shockingly, certain indigenous human populations in the United States seem to have out-meat eaten them. Finally, at the end of the digestive tract, there is fossilized, it sounds, Neanderthal poop, or coprolites. Sounds gross, but it's a treasure trove of information. In El Salt, Spain, archaeologists found ancient poops, revealing some Neanderthals had a carnivorous feast, while others went all in on plants. Some coprolite samples even hosted a lively population of nematodes that would have made those Neanderthals seriously sick. Putting it all together, Neanderthals didn't just stick to a simple meat or plant diet. They mixed it up based on the season and where they lived. Number 1. Caring for the injured and sick. Research from the University of York reveals that Neanderthals were not just primitive beings, but had a wow-worthy healthcare system. Contrary to the brutish image often associated with Neanderthals, this study uncovers their compassionate side, showing they assisted each other in serious injuries and childbirth challenges. The findings overturn previous notions and showcase Neanderthals as tough survivors and caring individuals. Dr. Penny Spikins, leading the study, highlights the astonishing discovery of a well-organized care system by examining skeletal remains with injuries that didn't result in loss of life. The study suggests that Neanderthals, living in small groups, faced daily threats from dangerous animals and the vulnerability of injuries. The revelation that they collaborated in healthcare, aiding recovery from severe conditions like broken legs, is truly remarkable. Moreover, the research emphasizes the crucial role of healthcare in the survival of Neanderthal communities, debunking the stereotype of primitive beings. The study sheds light on their evolutionary behavior, showcasing collaboration in healthcare alongside other essential activities, like hunting, food sharing, and parenting. These findings, funded by the John Templeton Foundation, redefine our understanding of Neanderthals, 
portraying them as more sophisticated and caring than previously believed. Thanks for watching. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos.